Okay, so in this video, we are going to talk about why I think the iPhone 14 is the worst iPhone to come out in years. Let's talk about the main selling point, the dynamic island. Now, I can see why Apple did this because they want their designs to be iconic. They want people to see it out on the street and be like, oh, wow, yeah, that's a new iPhone. And Apple is a little bit of a status symbol with Apple Watches and AirPods. Like you want people to know that you're rocking in the Apple ecosystem. So if you have the latest iPhone, you might as well show it off. And I think Apple learned their lesson with 3D Touch that if you can't make ads showing the new stuff, it's really hard to sell. And if you don't know what 3D Touch is, like ex that's exactly why. 3D Touch was a feature that came on the iPhone 6S where depending on how firmly you hit the screen, you can get different interactions. But Apple realized that they can't advertise that because how how are you supposed to show to press the screen more firmly? And it was one of these big Apple mistakes where they had dumped in millions of dollars into research and development of this feature that they couldn't advertise because they couldn't advertise it. It wasn't a selling point. And then they scrapped the whole thing a few years later on anyways. So they learned their lesson. Or did they? Because the dynamic island falls very closely in the steps of the touch bar. You see, when the touch bar came out, I had just changed jobs and they got me a new MacBook Pro and it was one of the first ones that had the touch bar. And I thought it was really cool at first. But then after using it for a while, I realized that it really kind of sucked because the buttons that you're used to, the volume and the screen brightness are never where you want it to be. And then it shows you all this other information that you didn't really need or use. And then because the touch bar is all software based, it would bug out and just like not work sometimes. So then you couldn't change your volume. And then it just makes you start thinking, well, why? I kind of like the keyboard the way it was when it had physical buttons. And it really made me think they're trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist. They're trying to just upgrade this thing just for the sake of the ad so then they can have big billboards and show these video ads saying, hey, look, we did something brand new. Oh, come by the new MacBook Pro. Which brings me back to the dynamic island. It's trying to solve a problem that doesn't even exist. The problem with the dynamic island is that because it's always moving, it's always there. It becomes an eyesore. And so you're reminded of it every time you use Face ID. You're reminded of it every time you use a Spotify app. You're reminded of it every time you watch a YouTube video in full screen. Content creators started making videos in the two by one aspect ratio so that it filled up more of the iPhone screen, but then now a little bit of it is cut off from the dynamic island. And so when I was using my friend's older iPhones, I kind of was jealous that they didn't have this half oval pill thing jutting out from the side. And as a software engineer, I hate when things are engineered just for the sake of engineering. The notch never was a real problem that needed solving through software. And now we're just making software for the sake of more software because it can move and, and change shapes. I get it. Apple is in a tough spot. Consumers expect a new iPhone every year. And I hate to say it, but we're just at a point where smartphones are pretty damn optimized. Gone are the days when every couple of years they had a new form factor, so much better screen technology and better cameras. And I know how much hard work that is because I would hate to be an engineer trying to figure out what to put in next year's iPhone. I'm so happy that that's not my job. And it's not Apple's fault either because they're just playing along with the capitalistic incentives that they need to follow. And Apple has figured out that in order to sell more devices, it's a lot easier if they can make a visual change and put that in all their ads and all their billboards to generate hype and excitement for their new products, even if those changes are actually detrimental to the user experience. And all that just makes me a little bit sad that Apple is straying from what they're so good at. They're so famous for making designs and products that enhance your life, not take away from it. I was talking about this with my friends and we kind of hope that the dynamic island will die in a few years and Apple will come up with a better solution. And so for the first time in many years, I think this version of the iPhone is somehow worse than the one that came last year. Let me know down in the comments what you think of Apple's new iPhones. My name is D.I. Lee. You are my VIP. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.